Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quintic equation. We have the quantity x plus 1 to the fifth power divided by x to the fifth plus 1, and that is equal to 8 of 1 over 11, and we're going to be looking for x values, real and complex. So let's get started. I'm going to be using a trick here, so let's go ahead and multiply the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by 3. You'll see why I'm doing this in a little bit. I know some of you are saying like, how should we know this, right? Well, you may not know this, but that's okay. So by doing that, I actually f found something pretty interesting. What did I find? If you compare the numerators to the numerators and the denominators to the denominators, you're going to notice that x equals 2 is a solution. Why? Because 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 plus 1 to the fifth power is equal to 3 to the fifth power, and that's equal to 243. So x equals 2 is a solution of this equation. Great, so that will be helpful. Of course, we're going to do more than this. So having said that, let's go ahead and cross multiply here. One of the things you need to be careful about is when you cross multiply, you can, uh, you're going to be getting some roots that don't exist in the original one. So let's go ahead and observe this first. Note that x plus 1 to the fifth power is divisible by x plus 1, and x to the fifth power plus 1 is also divisible by x plus 1. And obviously, x equals negative 1 is not a solution, right? Because it's going to make 0 over 0. So let's go ahead and factor the top and the bottom. That's going to give me x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1 to the fourth power. And let's go ahead and expand it. x to the fourth. Oh, well, you don't want me to skip steps. Let's, I'm going to write it out first. x plus 1 to the fourth power. And for the bottom, if I take out an x plus 1, remember we talked about factoring a to the power n plus b to the power n when n is odd. So it's going to look go, uh, it's going to go like this. x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 1. So the terms are going to alternate because the first factor is positive. So these two are going to cancel out. This is equal to 8 of 1 over 11. Okay? In the simplest form. Now, we did get a quartic equation from here. We do get a quartic. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. 81x to the fourth minus 81x cubed, and then I get plus 81x squared minus 81x plus 81. Everything is 81. And then the other one is going to be 11 times x plus 1 to the fourth power. So let's go ahead and simplify this. What is x plus 1 to the fourth power? That is equal to 11 times. If you remember the coefficients, it's going to be x to the fourth, and then we got 4x cubed. And since the second term is 1, we don't really have to worry about it. And then I got 6x squared, then 4x plus 1. So these two, ter uh, these two expressions are equal, so let's go ahead and distribute and simplify. This is going to be 11x to the fourth plus 44x cubed plus 66x squared plus 44x plus 11. And I know that this expression is equal to that one. So now we can go ahead and put everything on the same side and make it a full quartic. So 81 minus 11, that's going to be 70x to the fourth power. I have negative 81 minus 44, that's going to make negative 125x cubed. 81 minus 66 is going to be 15x squared. Negative 81 minus 44, that's going to make negative 125 again. And I have 81 minus 11, which is 70. Okay, and that is equal to zero. Okay, so this is a quartic equation, but not just any ordinary quartic. Why am I saying that? Because it's a symmetrical equation. So I can just go ahead and solve this equation easily by making uh, a change of variables. Notice that the reason why we call this symmetrical or symmetric is because if you look at the first and the last coefficients, they're equal 70 and 70, and negative 125 and negative 125 are negative 125 and negative 125 are also equal, and we have 15 in the middle. Great. So one thing we can do is divide everything by x squared. We know that x does not equal 0, right? x equals 0 is not a solution. So we can just go ahead and divide everything by x squared. Let's go ahead and do that. 70 x squared, if I divide by x squared, this is going to be one, negative 125 x. And then x squared divided by x squared is 1, so that's going to be 15 minus, when you divide x by x squared, it's going to be 1 over x. And then finally, we have 
over x squared. And of course, this is still equal to zero. Now, we can just go ahead and put these two together, take out 70, it gives me x squared plus one over x squared, and then minus 125 times the quantity x plus one over x. Notice that we have to negate both things and plus 15. Now, the good thing about this is that we're able to express x squared plus one over x squared in terms of x plus one over x, so that we can get a quadratic equation from here. I hope that wasn't too fast. Let me go ahead and explain what I mean by that. So I'm going to call this something. What should I use? U, Y. Okay, let's use U because I think we used Y last time. So if I call that U, X plus one over X is equal to U, then I can square both sides and that should equal U squared, obviously. And let's go ahead and expand it. X squared plus one over X squared plus two times X times one over X, which is equal to two. So I use the formula for A plus B quantity squared, which gave me a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. But of course, a and b are reciprocal, so they cancel out, leaving us with an expression for x squared plus 1 over x squared in terms of u. So we made a substitution here, and we got this one. So we can just go ahead and use that in our equation here. Let's go ahead and substitute everything. That gives us 70 multiplied by u squared minus 2 minus 125u plus 15 is equal to zero. And obviously this is a, qu a quadratic equation, so we can solve it. 70u squared, and then, and by the way, I just realized that in the top equation right here, we could divide everything by five, but that's okay. We can take care of it right now. So here, uh, 70u squared, and then I'll be getting minus 125u, this is going to give me negative 140. So negative 140 plus 15, that should be negative 125. That, does that look familiar? Because we've gotten the 125 a couple times here. So let's go ahead and divide everything by 5 now, right? That is the seems to be the greatest common factor. 14u squared minus 25u minus 25. Okay. All right. Great. So now we're going to solve this equation using the quadratic formula, but the values, the u values are not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the x values. So I have to back substitute and solve for x. Okay, great. Now, one thing to remember here, though, uh, if you remember at the very beginning, I said something like x equals 2 being a solution, right? We haven't looked at it yet, but at least we know that x equals 2 is a solution and negative 1 is not a solution. Great. So, and we got rid of negative one, so that's not going to be an issue. But we have to keep in mind that x equals 2 is a solution because we're going to use that information. Okay? Let's see what happens here. I can just go ahead and solve this equation. Looks like I'm uh, cursed again with a graph, but that's okay. I'm going to cut this. All right? So, I'm going to take this expression and carry it somewhere else. Okay, great. So, I, I think this is a leftover from the problem that we did about, uh, what is that called? It's non-standard trigonometric equation, right? The previous video. Anyways, so it's just going to be there. Here we go. Okay. Now, I'm supposed to solve this equation and then remember that u is equal to, oopsies, u is equal to x plus 1 over x and I'm going to back substitute. Let's go ahead and do that now. And I don't really need that piece. Okay, great. So now, uh, using the quadratic uh, formula, I have negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 25 squared. Let's write it that way because I want to factor it. b squared, what was the discriminant formula? b squared minus 4a and c. Great. Now I'm able to factor out 25, which happens to be a perfect square, by the way, which is perfect, right? That's awesome. So now I can just pull out a negative, uh, I mean, I can take out a 25, and that would be square root of 25 would be a 5 here. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So that leaves me with 25 plus, because that's a positive 25 I take out, uh, 4 times 14, uh, which is 56. Not good with arithmetic, you can tell, right? Okay. And then 25 plus 56 is 81. Square root of 81 is 9. Great. So this becomes 25 plus minus 5 times 9 is 45. And this gives us a much nicer expression. No radicals. Okay, great. So now if you add them up, uh, 25 plus 45 is going to be 70. Yeah, okay, that simplifies, cool. And I can divide by 14, and that would be 5 
halves, right? Okay, I gotta check my work so I don't make mistakes, silly mistakes. That's one of the u values. You can call it u1 if you want, doesn't matter, no big deal. And u2 is gonna be 25 minus 45, which is negative 20 over 28. And that should be negative 5 sevenths. We can only divide by four here because that's the greatest common factor. Great. So I got like two solutions, but these are u values. I still have to go back and find the x values, but guess what? There's gonna be some pleasant surprises here. So we said that x plus one over x is equal to u, and we know that u is, one of the u values is five halves. So to keep a long story short, because I don't wanna keep it too long, as you know, x equals two or one half from here. By the way, let me tell you something. In a reciprocal equation, what happens? Can we safely say that if x1 is a solution, then one over x1 is also a solution? That's something to think about. Anyways, let's just get back to the solution. So two and one half are solutions. Why? Because if two works, one half also works. Simple, right? Okay, cool. So, and we know, we already know that two is a valid solution, so that would work. And one half is also a valid solution, that should also work. But there's two other solutions of this cortic, and they're gonna come from the other one, right? So let's see what happens with that one. So from here we get the other u value, which is negative five sevenths. Let's go ahead and take care of this. This is gonna be a little more complicated. Let's make a common denominator and cross multiply, okay? If we do, then we get seven x squared plus seven x minus, it equals negative five x, but put everything on the same side. What am I saying? This is supposed to be a seven, not seven x. Okay, sorry about that. Seven x squared plus seven is equal to negative five x. Okay, don't skip steps, slow down. Okay, note to myself. And then now I'm gonna put everything on the same side. Okay. The reason why I'm rushing is I guess some people say, the video is too long, you could do this in two minutes. I could do it with my eyes closed. Awesome, great. Okay, I can't. So this is my quadratic and let's go ahead and check the solutions. X equals negative B plus minus the square root of B squared, 25 minus, 4ac. Simple, right? Isn't that awesome? We have a quadratic formula divided by 2 times 7. And from here, we're getting something interesting. 4 times 7 times 7. Okay, 7 times 7 is 49. 49 times 4, what is that? Double 98, 196. Great. So 196 minus 25, that should be 171. Something like that. Is 171 divisible by anything? I don't know. Oh, looks like it's divisible by 9. Great. Okay, anyways, let's just write it down. But that's a negative one. Yay, we get complex solutions, finally. Okay, great, so good news. We're gonna get complex solutions from here, but let's go ahead and simplify this 171 thing first. So 171 is divisible by seven. Hmm, let's see. Could it be, I mean, did I say seven? Sorry, I meant nine, you know that. Okay, nine times 20 is 180. Aha, I got it. It's nine times 19. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, I never thought about it before. So anyways, so what does that mean? Well, I can take out a three, Great. And then I'll end up with square root of 19, but I'll also have the, the imaginary thing, the i, right? And divide by 14, I'll get my complex solution. So these are gonna be the complex solutions, and then I have x equals two, and I have x equals one half. Since I started with a qu quartic, was it a quartic? Well, it was a quintic, but notice that x equals negative one is not gonna be a solution. It makes it undefined. I don't wanna go back to the graph, okay? So this is going to be all the valid solutions, real and complex. I know you know complex, uh, you like complex solutions. That's why I also included them. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.